Good morning. Glad to have you together with us here this Wednesday morning. And I'm looking forward to church tonight. I love the gathering of God's people. I'd really rather us be in the auditorium, but we're not there quite yet. But we'll be in the parking lot and hope you come along. Come a little early. We're moving into the nicer parking lot, some shade trees, and I'm going to be in the middle and uh, kind of surrounded by everybody. So it'll be a new experience, but uh, some of the staff felt like that might be a better place. So hope you'll uh, join us. Let me just mention a couple things. First of all, I heard a comment in the news that was interesting, um, and we're going to be in the in the book of Leviticus if you want to find that. But I heard a comment in the news um, that someone said that the wrongs that were done to General Flynn, that those things would be made right. Uh, they said the facts are going to come out, and uh, right will be um, exposed, and wrong will be exposed. And and isn't it interesting that now the uh, the, uh, the the testimonies on under oath that uh, that said Flynn had done nothing, but all the public things that were that were said that accused him and slandered him. It's interesting that everything's coming out. And I love that passage in Matthew where Jesus said every idle word uh, will be uh, will be accounted for, will, will be judged. And uh, the things that are whispered in the ear are going to be shouted from the housetop. We had a great God, a wonderful God. Let's just do right, love him, trust him. He'll take care of things. And he's certainly in charge of what's going on in our country right now. And we want to prayerfully and uh, discreetly walk through these days. But I want you to notice uh, some things in Leviticus chapter 25. In, in Leviticus 25, you've heard me mention uh, the first mention of a word, the first time a word's in the Bible. It, it sets a tone for that word. It'll define the word. There's various things that will happen. But it's no accident the way first things are lined up or shown in the Bible. No repetition in certain books. But in Leviticus chapter 25, 18, you have the first time the word safety is used or safe leap. And so it says, um, safety, in verse 18, Wherefore you shall do my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them, and ye shall dwell in the land in safety. And so here's the first time the word safety is used. Safe is used a little bit later, and um, um, just about the handling of some situations where someone's going to be safe from harm. But And we'll look at a couple of those. But think about safety. Um, we're, we're sitting in a culture right now where where we are sitting in our houses with the thought of safety, the idea that we've that well we've got to, we've got to be safe, and you know I was thinking, aren't we glad that Jesus didn't take the safe route? We'd all be on our way to hell had Jesus not been willing to take a dangerous road. The disciples took a dangerous path. Um, the founders of our country, oh my, the the risk they took. Um, First coming to America and then deciding we want a free country. We're not in. We're we're not going to be uh, uh, under a monarchy, and we're not going to. Uh, they finally had to decide we're not going to be under the rule of England nor of anyone. And uh, and and understand there are early days. There was some people were still struggling with this identity of freedom and a free nation, a representative uh, government form of government, the three branches of government. That all got fought through and it took time to work this thing out that we take for granted when uh, after Washington led our military so uh, so wonderfully and was blessed so amazingly they asked Washington George Washington if he would be the king and he said no I'm not going to be your king we left that that's not what, stop repeating stupid in the past and we're not doing that and uh, he finally agreed to be president for a brief term then needing to be reelected for another brief term, and that and, and that was it. Two terms done. And um, this thing of safety, not a soldier puts a uniform on, thinking safety first. And and the the life we live, uh, boy, what a what a boring life if we had to always shelter in because of safety. Think how many people are killed on the freeways and on roads because of drunk drivers. And here you're innocently doing. Uh, the right thing, and somebody slaps into you because they've been drinking. But you know what I've noticed? We've not made all liquor drinkers shelter in and keep their influence of their liquor gone because all these politicians are a bunch of booze-guzzling uh, sops. Um, man, we're, we're in a culture today 
where double standards are everywhere. And so uh, we start thinking about this thing of safety. Let me show you another verse. Look over the book of Job. Job chapter 3, there's a lot of lessons on safe or safety. But if you look at the book of Job chapter 3, and Job is right before the book of Psalms, Job chapter 3. And when we talk about safety, uh, I worked up in the woods in the northern part of the state, spent a lot of time in the mountains, cut down, fell, they call it felling, or to fell a tree. Uh, why do you call that? Because the tree fell. It didn't just fall, you cut her down. But uh, big old chainsaws with uh, giant bars and, and, uh, and you know, those fallers, they called them every day, they'd go up into the woods and uh, they'd, they'd work in pairs. One would be watching the tree and, um, and somebody would have a stick or something. If there was a problem, they'd whack that guy in the back with the stick. He'd drop the chainsaw and head for cover or the guy behind him would help him know which way to go. Sometimes a branch, a big branch would be falling called a widow maker and the widow makers would come down and make a widow out of the wife. Um, falling 50, 100, 150 feet, a big old branch hit that, hit that guy, even with a heart, had to break his neck. But, um, I have a, a friend in high school. He was, he worked as a choker setter. And so once the trees were all cut, another guy would come along with a chainsaw, and trim all the branches off, and then they'd buck or cut the tree up into 16 or 32 foot lengths. And so now you've got these logs with no branches cut into 16 feet or 32 foot lengths. And then a, a, a big skidder, because it would skid the logs out, a big tractor would come down with a long cable. And a, a strong young man would be the choker setter. And he'd have a cable that he'd get around the one end of that log, and it would just hook into itself. And then a big ring on the other side, he'd hook into the hook on the long cable that the skidder or the tractor had. And they would pull those. They had a winch, and then they would, the tractor would drag it, and the winch would drag it as well. And they'd pull these logs up. Uh, up to roads where they could be loaded onto a truck. They were loaded with a, you, could you guess it, with a loader. A great big thing that would grab those logs, put it up on the trucks. And uh, I had a good friend in high school who was a choker setter. And it was a dangerous job. And there happened to be a stump that no one noticed. And the log was laying this way. And, and the choker setter, uh, with the, my friend the choker setter, he, he wrapped the, the choke chain on one end. And when the log, when the tractor started to pull it, it hit that stump and just spun that log around and killed him just like that. It was an unsafe job. The work in the woods was dangerous. Um, but you know what? People still did it. Um, whether it be putting on a uniform for our military or whether it be uh, flying, you know, the people who are in the air, in the, uh, the, uh, the astronauts, people that are in the space program, you, I've heard them interviewed. They are chomping at the bit for a chance to get out of our atmosphere well, all these safety-loving people, they, oh, no, we can't let them do that. That's what they spent their life training for. And they are willing to run the risk because they say that what they're doing is worth the risk. Uh, childbirth, moms, uh, over the years, recently, we've got such great medical uh, professionals. It doesn't happen much, but, but for hundreds of years, mothers died in childbirth. They didn't quit having babies. And uh, just to understand that we're in this world that is not a safe world. Uh, right down the street from our church, people jump out of, out of a perfectly good airplane all day long, parachuters, and once in a great while, someone dies down there. But they don't quit parachuting. Now, this thing of safety is highly, highly overrated. We're going to get, we're, we'll end up with no football. We'll end up with no sport programs. We'll end up uh, cocooning ourselves, bubble wrapping us, and not allowing us to get anything done in life. And this world cannot be built on the mentality of safety. And I just say to you ladies, you need to, to just relax a little. God put men and women on earth, and we need each other. And uh, sometimes the dad runs a little more reckless. Sometimes it's the other way around. But more often than not, the lady's got her head level, and the guy's doing a little reckless. We need that, especially boys. But we need it. And don't you gals get... Uh, uh, you know, corralling your husband and robbing him of his manhood and his dare. And, and people love to, how fast did you drive? And as, as young people, we would go off cliffs into the rivers and, and lakes and how high a cliff can you go off? And, and uh, all kinds of, how, how big a waterfall can you go over in an inner tube? That's called fun. And it's also called life. But if you look at Job chapter, uh, Job chapter 3, 
Job makes an interesting statement in chapter 3, verse 26. Um, I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. The verse before that, he puts it in better context. The thing that I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come uh, unto me. Job had some concerns, and he was uh, he was living a life of safety and care and walk with God and guard his finances. And, and he, was, he was careful because he had some fears and he didn't want bad. And, and yet, what does it say? Yet, the end of verse 26, yet trouble came. You know, just because you're careful doesn't mean trouble doesn't come. And I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm the guy who's never driven 100 miles an hour in a car. I'm the pretty safe oriented person, but I have done a lot of other less than in intelligent things in my life, but uh, safety is is uh, safety is a curse. You know, Hitler and Mao and Stalin; these people took away all the guns from their citizens to make the country safe. And then look at the hundreds of millions of people that they murdered because those people were safe. It doesn't work that way. And the idea of a of a nation being built upon the word safety is crazy. From childhood, I mean, when my children were little, I put them out working. I put them out doing various jobs in our yard, in the house, caring for the car, mowing lawns. And it wasn't, they weren't, uh, they were probably early school age or pre, uh, you know, maybe five, six, seven years old uh, when they had a firearm in their hands for the first time. Uh, we shot guns. We shot safely, but we weren't going to be so panic stricken that my, my kids were afraid of a gun. And uh, my sons always had pocket knives, both my boys. And one of the boys came home from a, a camp out with a bunch of the guys and, um, and uh, had his thumb wrapped up. And I said, what happened? He said, cut myself on my knife. Well, everybody that's got a knife as a kid's cut themselves. And if you haven't cut yourself on a pocket knife, then it wasn't sharp enough. But that's just life. And, uh, and I want to I encourage you, don't freak out over safety. Uh, you would not get in a car. You wouldn't get in a bathtub. You wouldn't, by the way, you sure wouldn't take vaccinations and all this stuff the doctors are jamming on our kids if we took the big picture on this, this idea of safety. Uh, the, one of the, I've mentioned this before, but the, the cardiologist that I had when I had this ablation surgery, and he was trying to help me without having to have the surgery. I wanted the surgery. I want to be done. I want to be fixed or dead. And they gave me this uh, beta blocker, whatever medicine it was, and and uh, I came back and he said, are you taking that medicine? Well, I'd read the side effects and I hadn't taken one of them. I said, no, I'm not taking it. He said, well, why not? I said, I read the side effects. He said, you need to take it. I said, why'd you give me the side effects list if you didn't want me to make an intelligent decision? He said, well, you, you should. I said, I'm not going to. And he leaned over the desk at me. And this is the cardiologist who prescribed the medicine. He said, I wouldn't take it either. He said, I don't take any of that stuff. No way. Now, when you remember things like that, when you have these doctors pronouncing um, bondage for a whole nation. Uh, we're, we're finding out uh, one of the doctors with President Trump said she didn't think she could trust the information coming from the CDC. We Look, doctors are wrong like everybody else. And I'm not, I like doctors. I'm thankful. Boy, they, they went into my heart, ablation, surgery. They ran a laser up one leg and a camera up the other. And they burned some nerves or whatever it was on the top of my heart and I've been on treadmills and running and finding these five years or so since it happened but but just because you're trying to be safe doesn't mean danger's not going to come the apostle Paul had his share of trouble and he was sure a godly man and uh, Joseph was a good young man he got sold by his brothers and Daniel was a good young man and his whole country fell apart and he was a prisoner in a foreign country look we're not we're not supposed to be led by safety we're supposed to be led by right and good and purpose and and uh, let, let look at another verse. Look over to the book of Psalms, chapter 4. Just a few pages past Job. Psalms, chapter 4. And again, uh, we start thinking, we, we, we become safety nuts in our country. And uh, I, again, I'm not against safety. Uh, how the brakes check, tires check, steering, all the safety things on my vehicles, lights, I want them all right. And, uh, and I'm not stupid, but I'm also... Uh, happy to walk in the woods and as a teenage guy I'm, I don't know maybe I was 17 first time I had a rattlesnake uh, I stepped around a tree and a rattlesnake was cold up there and uh, uh, asleep I assume I didn't ask him and uh, he struck and hit my pant leg 
and uh, I, I launched out to uh, Astro Travel about 10 feet away from the tree. I didn't remember bending my knees. All I knew was I was about 10 feet away. He was coiled again for another strike, and I was trembling so bad I couldn't move. And I uh, hollered to a friend. He brought me a shovel, and I, uh, I was so wound up with adrenaline, I, I killed it and then chopped it and chopped it. and I hit that snake until I broke the shovel handle, and that's a lot of chopping to break a shovel handle. Um, Boy, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't being unsafe. I was in the right place doing what I was supposed to be doing. It happened to be there was a rattlesnake there doing what he was supposed to be doing also. And gratefully, God kept me alive. That's where we are in Psalm chapter, uh, Psalm chapter four. Look at Psalm four, verse eight. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. It's God who keeps us safe. And in that day, it was a risky moment. But it's God who had a plan. It's God who keeps us safe. And, oh, folks, we can trust God. We ought not live in panic and fear. And don't, uh, don't put your children in a styrofoam lined box and never let them out. Um, man, there's no point in doing that. And most people will admit that the immunity system needs to be introduced to uh, other stuff to get those immunities built up. Look again over at Psalm chapter 33. Psalm chapter 33 in your Bibles. And um, some of my morning moments are also sent out on email, but, but this one, I didn't type any of these notes up, so this is it. You get it, and it's gone. But Psalm 33, look down at verse 17. The horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. You know, the, the soldiers in the wars, well, they had so many horses and so many chariots, and oh, they thought they were going to be safe. And, and David says, oh, a horse is a vain thing for safety. It, it's uh, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Go over to, to Psalm, um, uh, let's go to Proverbs 21. Proverbs chapter 21, the next book, Psalms, then Proverbs. Proverbs 21 follows up with that where David said the horse is a vain thing for safety. Look at Proverbs 21 and down to verse 31. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. These are good cross references. You're going to write in the margin of your Bible. Um, so Psalm, uh, Psalm chapter four and uh, Psalm chapter thirty-three, verse seventeen, and then Proverbs chapter twenty-one and verse thirty-one. The horse is prepared against the day of battle. It doesn't mean we should. He, he's endorsing preparation here. Prepare, do your best, but put your trust in Him. So uh, all the things that we do, uh, let's be wise and prudent, everything we can. But then we got to trust God. And the fact is, you can be as safe economically and plan and prepare and put money away and get one lawsuit and have no money left over. You could have your uh, the company that's handling your, your pension go bankrupt and lose your pension. Uh, those things happen. That's a reality. You could say, well, I'm going to store it up in silver and gold. You can be robbed. And look, safety, and, and I'm for all those things. I think pensions are great. I don't have one, but I hope you do. And... Uh, and uh, if you've got some silver and gold piled up, praise the Lord. Uh, take care of you and your wife and your children and uh, leave an inheritance to your children's children. If God would give you a way to do it, and use it all toward Christian education. That's a good thing to do with your money for your kids or grandkids. But get your kids out of this vile, corrupt sewer called an educational system provided by our government. But, but in regard to safety, folks, relax. Trust in God. And God is our refuge and our strength. When our children were little, I'll just share this in close, but when our children were little, they'd have nightmares and they'd get scared at times. And I'd sit by the bed and early, early on in their life, they memorized Psalm where, where, uh, where David wrote, what time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. Uh, what time I'm afraid, I will trust in thee. And we, we talked about it. And then over to Psalm 27, the Lord is my light. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? My children, many verses like that. By the time they were two, three years old, four years old, they were quoting verse after verse after verse. That little Kimmy, my granddaughter, I hear uh, Matt and Esther, her parents, uh, going over memory verses with her. And, and uh, she, she's singing Bible songs. She's, no, she's, I don't know, she's two, two and a half, I guess. Look, safety's from the Lord. Trust him. Go into your day, have a great day, be wise, be prudent, and then just trust God and show up at church tonight. We'll have a great night as we study a little bit more about this thing of faith. Have a great day.